I'm a skilled tradesman, 22 years, father of three, uh, a husband, and a homeowner. And uh, I was at work one day, I was pouring some concrete, and the driver of the truck kind of wasn't where he was supposed to be that day. And in a split second, my life changed forever. But we're actually out here right now in my shop. Not a very big shop. Here's my homemade get well cards for my children. Here's a list of medications of everything that I've gone through for two years. And I've got everything from x-rays to lawyers to all the court documents, notices of hearings, everything that these people put me through. So yeah, I was pouring concrete into this pier, which was a form for steel structure to sit on, and the driver of the truck wasn't paying attention and drug me up the steel wall with the concrete chute. I uh, actually uh, just about ripped my shoulder and arm off on the right side. They did what they could at the emergency room, took care of the, the wounds, and didn't really know exactly what was going on inside the arm and shoulder area. I started my worker's comp claim basically the day that I got injured. At 12 weeks, I was sent to an independent medical examiner over in Clyde, Ohio. I've never seen a doctor like that. He shows up late, unprofessional, and spent about five minutes with me. He said that I was uh, to the end of my improvement on my injury. But I knew that something was going on on the inside with the shoulder being gone, but nobody wanted to hear me. So I went from the beginning of my injury till 12 weeks and I was cut off financially. They stopped my benefits, they cut off my insurance. These are all documents from the workers' comp system, from doctors. There's my first arm sling, this black one right here. This is all documents all the way across my kitchen floor of all my life history in one year of the workers' comp system and the employer fighting my work accident. Here you got a guy that's 35 years old uh, walking around Norwalk in an arm sling. Okay, many different styles. I went through nine of them for a year. Nobody could understand. They, I'm sure people were skeptical to, to say that, well, why is this guy in a sling? Is he pretending? Is he milking? What is he? But nobody knew the pain that I was going through because I had no socket. I had no bicep. My stuff was gone. It was ripped out, violently, from a concrete chute. And nobody understood my, my story except my wife and my, you know, my family here at home. They, they could see my pain. They could see the struggles that I was going through. And my wife did everything that she could to stand up next to her man and take care of her husband and children. It's just, I have an amazing wife. I, she's my best friend, she's a hard working lady, and she's supported her family and done a job of a man. I waited for a year in an arm sling, waiting for this surgery to happen while I was drugged through the system. The doctor at the Cleveland Clinic said, when I finally got a chance to meet him, that if I didn't have the surgery, I was gonna die from blood clots to my heart and lungs. You know, I'm at that 36 years old, you know, little kids, three, five, and seven, you know, when it happened. And uh, it was just, it was a wake-up call. Painkillers. I lived off of painkillers. Obviously, those aren't all. Those were, were refills. But I lived off of these things. I was taking this stuff day and night. And finally, I just stopped. I mean, it was either I stopped or I died. Actually, the day I got home from surgery, my children and I and my wife sat at the kitchen table at dinner and we cut up my arm sling in pieces with a pair of scissors. I promised my children I'd never have to wear one ever again. And we took turns and we went around the table and we passed the scissors and the sling around. Everybody took a turn chopping it. Because this is one thing that always held me back for that time period and it'll never hold me back again. If you're having problems and you feel like it's the end, just know that things can get better. All you have to do is try.
because I tried. Things are getting better. <laughs> That's a good one. So I was at a friend's house and uh, he mentioned to me that his older brother had a hot dog cart for sale. And right then I knew that that was the new direction that I, I was going down. And I bought it on the spot. Now, I didn't have a whole lot of money to invest and the guy actually helped me out with, you know, purchasing the cart because he knew that what my family was going through, we needed some type of life preserver. So I got this car, it was basically just a stripped down stainless steel box. And I've, I've used my imagination and my passion of antiques in the old days and I've incorporated this into my cart. So now, I mean, I have a 50s retro hot dog cart, uh, Ward's Wieners is the name, and people love it. I tell you what, when you're down at the lowest of lows, dude, I mean, you just, uh, you're in dire straits and a need for, for change, I mean, you're gonna take whatever you can. And when I had that opportunity from uh, a friend of mine to, to purchase this cart, it was like a, like a sign from God. Like, here it is. Take this, what I've given you, and use it, and make the best out of it. I have to do this for my family, because nobody's gonna hire somebody that's been in a terrible accident, that got strung through litigation, and now has titanium shoulders. They're not gonna do that. So, guess what? I'm the guy for the job. I got the cart. I got the car, I got the attitude, and there's no stopping me now. I mean, this is just the beginning of what's, what's to come with my business, because I'm not gonna give up. I mean, I've already proven that I wouldn't give up. Go. This is Will Tweedle, and it's so really good. My name is Lincoln, I love like Will Tweedles, and they are the best. Whee! A lot, of go, a lot of stuff going on with setting up for the wiener, Dave. My son actually wanted to stay with me. A little bit too cold for him tonight. The most important part of my survival as a wiener man, out here in the cold. We're here at Havana Cigar, setting up for the first time this winter. See exactly how it's going to pan out. Never done this before, so I'm doing the best that I can to, uh, to make that first attempt to be successful here. So, right now what I'm doing is I'm dropping all my meat. Doesn't take too long for it to cook. These are my quarter pound all beef, all, all meat tanks. Some cheese on this, bud. Okay. How lucky that you Thank you, man. Look Thank out. you, man. Enjoy. Catch the catch right over there. You want to pickle tonight or anything? I'm good. Thank All you. right. Thank you. You're welcome. Be and for you, sir, pickle. All right. Gosh, you look sorry. Right? Never such a blizzard before. But baby, you'd freeze out there. It's up to you. How's that looking for you? Yeah. When you touch my hands. Right over there. Try that one. Come back and see me. I'll have your other one ready. This bratwurst is amazing. Think of my lifelong song. If you cut pneumonia and die, 
Get over that old doubt. Baby, it's cold. I have ketchup mustard right over there for you. Baby, Help it's yourself. cold outside. Right, some change here. No, you sure? Yeah. Well, I appreciate that very much. God bless you. Oh, man, it's been a long, long couple hours here in this cold weather. It's like 18 degrees out. Got this nice warm cart, though, to keep my hands nice and toasty. Definitely uh, been an experience. I wasn't sure exactly what it was going to be like to, uh, to set up in this weather. I don't know if I'll make it, but I'll keep trying. You know, this is a from the ground up business here, and it's all done by myself. So tonight we're set up at Havana Cigar, doing a little event here for Black Friday, hoping these uh, folks come out and grab some more wieners. Got to try out the new dinner bell here. Every time you hear our bell, a wiener gets his bun. Still a long road ahead of me, and I'm willing to, to take that road and do the best that I can for my wife and kids because they mean the world to me. And uh, we get one chance to be successful, and it's uh, my chance, my turn. So just keep track of me, believe in me, and know that and no matter how hard things can be in your life, that there's always a, an open door somewhere. You just gotta find it.